other wireless technology. In this video, we're going to take a look at some other technologies that could also be competing and interfering with our 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies. Let's jump in. I'd like you to imagine that you and I are at work. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday and our boss walks up and says, Hey, can you guys tell me what are some of the things that generate RF signals that might interfere or get in the way of our beautiful 802.11 wireless local area network? Here are a few items that we could share with them. The first of them is WiMAX. WiMAX stands for Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave access. The AX at the end is just being a clever way of writing out the terminology for that technology. Now we know a few things about the 802 groups. We have 802.3 and that's Ethernet. We have 802.11 and that's our wireless local area networking. And then for WiMAX it is 802.16. Regarding getting in the way of some of our frequencies, it can operate in two different areas. It has the 2 to 11 gigahertz range, which we can see covers the 2.4 gigahertz ranges we work with and also the 5 gigahertz range. So there might be some overlap there. The other range that WiMAX can play in is 10 to 66 gigahertz. And that is all licensed space. For example, in 802.11, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz ranges that we use, those are unlicensed bands, meaning we don't have to go and have a special license to use them. We buy an access point, we put it in our building, and boom, we're off to the races. Well, this right here is licensed. So in the United States, that'd be the FCC, the governing body for that. Now, most of the time, they're actually going to use these frequencies that are licensed. And the reason is, is because they don't want to have to contend or worry about any interference from Wi-Fi in the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz ranges. So another really cool thing about WiMAX is that, check this out, it can go for miles and miles and miles. So let's say this is 35 or 40 miles that we need to send this signal. WiMAX can do that. There's also application for fixed WiMAX, which would be an example of this, and also mobile WiMAX. So perhaps a laptop with a WiMAX adapter card and as this becomes more popular, we're very likely to see fixed stations sending the signals very, very long distances. And perhaps WiMAX delivering that last mile to the customer. For example, this customer right here has a high gain antenna going towards the base station so he can pick up that signal. So that would also be an example of fixed. So in answer to our boss, one of the things that might be interfering with our Wi-Fi is if they're using that lower range for WiMAX which potentially could have interference with our frequencies as well. Another wireless technology that is not compatible with 802.11 but can get in the way because it uses some of the same frequencies is this guy right here, Zigbee. And that is in the 2.4 gigahertz range. So that right there might be enough to say, okay, great, it can cause a problem, but what the heck is Zigbee? Uh, rumor has it that it was named after the waggle dance that a bee, a honeybee, does in a hive that lets the rest of the swarm of bees know exactly how far and which direction the flowers and stuff that they should be going for are. So what's an application, for example, of a Zigbee network? Let's say that we are trying to build an intelligent house with all the meters, the gas, the water, the power, everything else, and we want that to be automated. How do we get automated signals back and forth from all those devices? Well, we need some kind of a network and Zigbee would be a perfect application for that. It's designed to support long battery life. The components are meant to be very, very low cost. There's also low data rates. To communicate with a device like that, it doesn't take a lot of data. So when we talk about low data rates, we're talking about the kilobits, like somewhere between 50 and 200 kilobits per second. It also is very, very quick to connect, which would be handy for a remote. If we hit a button on a remote control, we expect something to happen. We don't want to hit a button, wait 20 seconds, and then have some result. We're expecting that result to happen right away. So that's Zigbee. Another technology that could, but probably isn't going to be too impactful on our wireless is Bluetooth. It does operate in the 2.4 gigahertz space. And Bluetooth is considered a P-A-N. 
a personal area network. It doesn't go very far, but it's really, really handy. For example, your phone very likely has a Bluetooth compatible earpiece that can work with it. Or you may have some Bluetooth headphones and there's three different classes of Bluetooth. There's class one, two, and three, and they relate to power. A class one is 100 milliwatts. However, most of the Bluetooth that we're gonna be seeing is class two, and that's less power. That's 2.5 milliwatt. And the range of that is about 10 meters. And a class three is barely awake. It's one milliwatt. And it may only go a meter. So even though we are using some of the same frequencies with Bluetooth, because most of it's class two and not going very far, it's not too likely to cause a huge interruption with our wireless networks. Now, what else could get in the way of our beautiful 802.11 frequencies, the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz? Well, basically anything that generates a signal inside of that unlicensed space, if it's strong enough, could cause a problem. So gaming equipment, telephones that are operating at the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz range where we are. Ovens, and I don't mean a big conventional oven, I'm talking about a microwave oven. Because if that microwave oven is leaking enough of its 2.4 gigahertz frequency, it absolutely will interfere with your 2.4 gigahertz wireless network. And those are kind of challenging because you might have a microwave that's quite often used during lunch breaks or at other times of the day. And it's at that moment when the RF is having problems in certain areas of your network. If you ever see a pattern happening where at certain times of the day, the wireless network starts to fail or get really, really slow, it could be just because it's too busy or there could be additional interferences happening during that part of the day. Monitors, and that could be baby monitors or other monitors, anything again, using those frequencies to send and receive information. If they're in the same frequency range that we're using, it could cause a problem. Now lights is the one I always have a fun time with. People say, oh, the lights are causing problems with the RF, with the wireless network. Even though lights are not operating at 2.4 gigahertz, there is some oscillation. Fluorescent lights have gas inside that's being charged over and over and over again. And as a result, that's why it's emitting light. Well, as the RF hits those lights, there's gonna be some reflection of the RF signal. So if the fluorescent light is oscillating at 60 hertz, which is really, really slow compared to 2.4 gigahertz, Sometimes we'll be hitting that light when it's charged. Sometimes we'll be hitting that light when it's not charged. So that's one way that fluorescent lights could impact our wireless network. In this video, we've taken a look at a few technologies that also generate RF signals that could interfere with our 802.11 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz base. We've also taken a look at some other impacts to our signals. So now when our manager asks us what could be interfering, we now have a few additional items that we could offer as possible interferences. I appreciate you joining me. I've had a fun time. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.